for, for vegetable plants, it's usually pretty easy to send an appropriate sample. If you've got a leaf problem where it's clearly spots on the leaves, then obviously we need leaves. It's best to leave leaves still attached to a stem if possible. They'll remain fresher in the mail. Um, and place those uh, plant parts in a plastic bag. We usually recommend a Ziploc bag. You don't need to poke holes in it. Do not add a wet paper towel to the bag. Uh, a lot of these diseases will cause the plant to rot in the mail, and especially if the, mail, if the uh, sample sits in the mail over the weekend, then that can be a real problem. So you always want to try to mail your packages early in the week. Um, if you've got symptoms of wilting or stem lesions or anything that you think might have a root problem, then you really need to be sending a whole plant. And so the best thing to do is to dig up your plant, leave soil around the root system, and um, put that in a plastic bag, tie it off around the base of the stem so that the soil doesn't uh, go up on the leaves in the mail. And then send that whole plant in either a padded mailer or a box. Um, we collected a sample today and we pulled this up and so there's not much root uh, soil on the root system. So it'd be better to leave some, a ball of soil on the root system and then place that in a plastic bag, tie it off, and then you can leave the leaves outside the bag and, and uh, put it in a padded box or mailer. Or you can put the whole plant then in another plastic bag. You always want to keep the diagnostic form that we ask you to fill out separate from the sample. If you put that down in the sample bag, a lot of times the diagnostic form will arrive wet and we may not be able to read the writing on the form. Another point about submitting a good sample is that the form is actually just as important as the sample itself. So a lot of times with abiotic problems where there's no pathogen present, um, we need to know the history of how that plant was treated. And so you really need to be careful to fill out both pages of our form um, as thoroughly as you can when you're submitting samples. Well, a lot of times in vegetable gardens, the nematode problem that you see is root, not nematode. And in that case, we'll be able to see the galls on the roots, but only if you send the roots. So um, again, a whole plant is best for that. If we're gonna extract nematodes from the soil, then we need at least a pint of soil that comes from the root zone of the plant. And then we can process that for uh, plant parasitic nematodes. Our lab is a service to the extension agents across the state, so any county agent who has responsibility for answering plant questions um, can send a sample to our lab. And it needs to be accompanied, of course, with the diagnostic form. And we will um, go through those samples and do the lab tests that we need to do to figure out what the problem is. With plant diseases, it's often something that we may have to culture from, so that's going to take a few days, and some types of culturing can take even longer. So it, it's going to vary a little bit about the number of days before you get your report back. But once we diagnose the problem, we will log it out uh, electronically on our database and email you uh, email a report to the extension agent and then we expect that the extension agent will get back to the grower with the, with the uh, response. Almost all the same criteria that Marianne mentioned for submitting plant samples works for me. So if you suspect that the in, it's insect damage, mite damage, uh, slug damage or related invertebrate damage on the vegetable. The same criteria work for the leaves as far as submitting the leaves, how to, how to prepare them, how to ship them. I find the samples shipped in boxes tend to be a little bit better, not so smashed in the mail. And then if you suspect you have an insect culprit, the insect, the extension offices are provided with uh, mailing tubes and vials and so the insect would need to be, or mite, would be submitted in alcohol. And, uh, and that would be, alcohol vials would be the best way to do that. The same process works. You have a, a form that's separate for the insect identification lab, and then you would, the county agent would submit it uh, to our lab, and the reply would go back to your particular agent. Um, if you're not sure, and this happens a lot, we have, you have uh, both, you could be insect damage, it could be disease. Um, you know, our labs work very well together and we're close by in the same building. So in some ways it doesn't matter which lab you submitted to it, we'll be, we'll be able to bounce it back and forth. 
but again, as much complete information as possibly can um, on the form. And if you, if you suspect that it's more likely a disease than insect, I would have you err on the side of caution and use the disease clinic form because that provides a lot more information about the particular plant.